and I mean this in the most loving way, like quit blaming those things on why you're not getting the results that you want. Sleep, water, move your body, eat better every single day. I always know when I have a lot of new followers. Do you guys know how I know? I want to know if you guys know. I want to know also, like, how long have you guys been following me? So if you've been following me for a while, you guys might laugh out loud to yourselves about some of the things that I'm going to say here. And if you're new to following me, just know that I say so many things from a place of love, but it does get comical. I've been on a lazy keto journey for a little over four years now. I started off on May 1st of 2019. I weighed almost 350 pounds. And when I say that I've tried every fad diet out there, I have. Every fad diet, every fad product. I have tried and so I had a friend Jamie who um, our daughters play softball against each other and she started drinking ketones in 2018 and she started following lazy keto and I wanted nothing to do with either of those you know she would ask me a lot like do you want information on ketones she would show a lot of like lazy keto recipes and I was just kind of ignorant to it all until I wasn't. I had my rock bottom moment, knew exactly what I wanted to do. May 1st was my day one and I was able to drop 100 pounds of fat in eight months. I decided to go public on social media because I feel like so many of us overthink everything. Lazy keto is a very simple lifestyle change. And I say lifestyle change because I'll eat lazy keto probably forever. Now I'll have cheat days, cheat meals, cheat cheat weeks you know I try to drink a lot of water but occasionally I'll get a zero sugar Pepsi it'll get a diet Mountain Dew when I start to feel like crap when you know I get a lot of breakouts when I get really bloated when my clothes start to get a little bit tighter I know what I need to do get back into feeling better and that's with lazy keto lazy keto is an easy lifestyle way to live because you're eliminating versus tracking you know i know that there's a lot of people on social media and they'll say calorie deficit is the way to go but like i don't want to track anything i did weight watchers off and on for 20 years i'll never knock the program i liked it i had great success with it when my mindset was right but like i don't want to track food i don't want to track an app on an app I don't wanna keep a food journal, and that's why I like Lazy Keto, because it's just don't eat these foods and focus on these foods. But I don't want you guys to overthink or overcomplicate this. Lazy Keto is about eliminating bread, pasta, processed foods like chips, crackers, and cereal, and it's eliminating real sugar. There's so many keto labeled foods out there. There's keto bread, there's keto tortillas, there's keto ice cream, there's, you know, all of this keto bars and um, candies and stuff like that. If your main goal is fat loss, you still want to avoid those. If you're really wanting to like trim down and have good fat loss, you want to eliminate bread, pasta, processed foods, um, and sugars. I do eat processed meats. I do eat processed cheese. I've always done that since day one. I tried doing like all organic. I tried shredding my own cheese. I tried eating only Kerrygold, but like I didn't have any di difference. <laughs> I don't know when I'm cheap. I always, I'm always looking for a, a good deals. I don't know, like, I I'm still gonna drink soda and I'm still gonna have ice cream, so it doesn't make sense for me to go all organic if I'm still going to have those from time to time. Like, does that make sense? I'm not knocking the all organic. If it's on sale and it's cheaper than the real stuff, I, I'll buy it, but like, I don't go out and seek to only have those kinds of things. So I do eat processed meats and I do eat processed cheese. So you want to eliminate bread, pasta, processed foods, and sugars, and you wanna focus on eating protein, veggies, fruits, and fats. So earlier this week, I shared kind of some pictures of some of the meals that I've had recently over the last few weeks. And then I've also shared my white chicken chili recipe that has peas in it. And I tell you guys, it does not matter. Every single time I post a picture with peas, people like come out of the woodworks and they're like, you can't have peas, you can't have peas, why? Like if you're thinking about lazy keto and you're thinking about the elimination piece, you're eliminating bread, pasta, processed foods, and sugars. So like, and I'm talking sugars like soda, ice cream, candy bars, cupcakes, cookies, cakes, brownies. I'm not talking about like the sugars that you find in fruits and vegetables. When you think about peas and you think about the elimination piece, like where does that fall in? It doesn't. When I had the most success, when I was very disciplined, when I was super intentional with everything that I did, I did only focus on green vegetables, but guess what? I still had peas and people will still argue with me and they're like, peas aren't a vegetable, they're a start. I don't care. They're in the vegetable section and they're green, so I ate them. And like, here's the thing. 
I am about being realistic. I'm about showing you guys things that I've done personally to help me on my journey. I'm here to show you guys recipes, tips and tricks, and all the things that have helped me and things that I eat and things that I do. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nutritionalist, I'll never pretend to be one, but I did find success in following this lifestyle. And so that's why I come with to you guys to share with that, to share that with you guys because I think a lot of you guys just need to hear that. Don't get me wrong. In the beginning, I was the one at, you know, when we would go out to eat and I'll get a garden salad, I would be the one picking out the carrots because carrots aren't keto, right? But like, carrots aren't our problem. Peas aren't our problem. They're not why I weighed almost 350 pounds. But yet it's the first thing that everybody attacks when they're starting a journey or they're on a journey. It, listen, everybody's different. I know that like, beans aren't bad for you. I know that rice isn't bad for you. I know that like sprouted bread isn't bad for you, but like it sucks for me. I get bloated. I get pimples. Like my bones hurt sometimes when I eat too much of that. So you have to figure out what works best for you, but I'm telling you guys, peas, carrots, apples, peaches, they're, they're not your problems. Like let's be real. Like be for real for a minute. Is that the reason why you're at the weight that you are? And you know what? Some people can't have that stuff. Like, I get it. Some people have issues and their doctors are like, you can't have that. Perfect. Listen to your doctor. But like, for the mass amount of us, it's not a problem. Eliminate bread, eliminate pasta, eliminate rice, eliminate chips, crackers, cereal, eliminate real sugar, switch to zero sugar, sugar-free stuff, shop more on the outside of the grocery store versus the aisles, eat protein, veggies, fruits, and fats. And then, you know, the fats part kind of confuses people too. Just think of it this way. You want to keep it super simple. So you can go online and you can Google, hopefully this makes sense to you guys too. If you have any questions, let me know. But you can go on the internet and you can Google like healthy fats for keto. You are going to find things like switching from vegetable oil to avocado oil perfect easy done right just buy avocado oil instead of your other oil adding heavy whipping cream to like your protein shakes or your coffee easy switch you can use like if you like chia seeds like you can do some chia seed oat meal like it's like chia seed pudding is what they call it so i have recipes for that that i've shared so like chia seeds right eating fish a couple times a week so you know smoking salmon or grilling some kind of fish like we're getting out of that grilling season but like smoking is is, is really popular right now so like smoke your fish you can do nuts right? So almonds, um, pistachios, pecans, walnuts, those are some good fats as well. And then I usually try to have some kind of vegetable with every meal. So I have a protein and a vegetable and on my vegetables, I will add either butter or cheese. So I'm not telling you guys to go eat handfuls of cream cheese. I'm not telling you guys to like go get a brick of cheese and have that as your snack, but like incorporate those things into your meals. And that's how you're going to get healthy fats. And then you know, I make that, that mousse, that fat burning mousse. So it's heavy whipping cream, sugar-free cool whip and pudding powder. I'll eat off of that throughout the week. And that's got good fats in it as well. And so you just kind of got to be smart about it. You have to have your mind, right? All right. So I started and stopped so many fad diets because I was looking for a quick fix. This is a lifestyle change for me and I've been doing it for four years. My husband eats the same way. Are we always the skinniest? No. We're emotional eaters and we love food and we travel a lot between june and july june 1st through august 4th basically we stayed in 20 stayed 27 nights in hotels across seven states we were on the go a lot so this summer we just kind of had fun we we had drinks but i drank a lot of zero sugar stuff we ate out a lot i tried to eat you know wings and salads and take you know bread off my burgers and stuff like that tried to skip the french fries but i had ice cream right we're on the road a lot we drive a lot because it's a lifestyle change like we're not expecting anybody to be perfect we're not perfect either but you also have to show yourself a little bit of discipline so that you can break the cycle of whatever it is that's keeping you at the weight that you're at. I gave up a lot of stuff for eight months. I did not have a single cheat meal for eight months. I didn't have a drop of alcohol for eight months. I got outside every day and I walked 30 minutes every single day. I shot for 100 ounces of water every single day. I gave up soda for eight months. We barely ate takeout. When we did eat takeout, it was when we were traveling. Our kids play sports, a lot of sports. And so we're always chasing after them being their super fans but you know so we would eat out when we were on the road but we also went to the grocery store and brought stuff back to our hotel room so deli meat cheese sticks fruit trays veggie trays stuff like that so that if we were you know 
at a hotel for four days, we weren't eating every single meal out. We were having smaller snacks throughout the day and then having like one bigger meal out. You know, there's solutions to all your problems. You just have to be open-minded to it. But lazy keto, it, it's not bad, right? That, that low carb white chicken chili recipe I posted. It has peas in it. You can take the peas out. I'm telling you guys peas aren't your problem. It also has two cans of cream of chicken soup. Like if you look at the label and you, you read it, yeah, it's got carbs in it. But like you're adding it as an ingredient to a soup. It's a big batch of soup. So the amount of cream of chicken soup that you're getting in that serving that you're having for yourself is minute. And let's be for real, cream of chicken soup probably isn't your problem. The peas in the, the white chicken chili, they're not your problem. Maybe it's the overeating, maybe it's the having crackers or a peanut butter sandwich with your chili, or maybe having a soda, or maybe having three sodas. Maybe it's eating McDonald's every day, or maybe it's, you know, having ice cream every night, or maybe it's cooking, lot, baking, lots of, like, right? We, we, we could go on and on and on about what our real problem is. And I mean this in the most loving way, like, quit blaming those things on why you're not getting the results that you want sleep, water, move your body, eat better every single day. And then I use a supplement. So I drink ketones. It's not to replace any of your healthy habits. It's a supplement. It's a tool that I add into my daily routine that helps me achieve my goals and get, get things rolling a little bit faster and they make me feel better. Do people need supplements? Not everybody needs supplements, but like a lot of people need supplements. And so I incorporate those as well. So, you know, there's five things that I focus on every single day. It's a water goal, a movement goal, a way of eating, a fasting goal, and a supplement goal. So like I have that and that's what I focus on every single day. Every day I wake up, it's, no, it's a new day. It's basically day one every day. You wake up and you wanna be a little bit better than you were yesterday. So that, that's kind of like how it is. Be open-minded to lazy keto. Be true and honest to yourself. And at the end of the day, remember, lazy keto is about eliminating versus tracking. You're eliminating bread, you're eliminating pasta, you're eliminating processed foods like chips, crackers, cereal, rice, and you're eliminating real sugar. And you're focusing on, because this is the key, a lot of people focus on the things they can't have. There's so many things you can have. Protein, veggies, fruits, and fats. And if you're really, really, really trying to hit goals pretty quickly, you'll get accelerated results by doing green vegetables and berries. One cup of fruit a day, seven cups, up, three to seven cups of vegetables a day. Eight hours of sleep, 100 ounces of water, movement daily I'm telling you guys it works all right people are like oh well then why aren't you so skinny well because i'm an emotional eater and i love food and just because you lose 100 pounds doesn't mean all that goes away but i'm nowhere near where i was when i started and it's always gonna be a process for me so we do this together i share the recipes i share the resources i share the cheat sheets i share all that stuff with you guys and feel free to ask questions anytime you want but don't overthink it keep it simple protein veggies fruits and fats that's what you want to focus on every single day. Shorten your eating window and be smart you know, about it. People are always like, what's the portion size on, on the stuff that you're eating? This is kind of my take on that, all right? If you have kids, drop a heart in the comments. Like, I have two kids. They're 15 and 17. So they've always been at the same schools for the most part. And when they were in elementary school, my daughter is younger, my son is older, and they do not have the same... Like they don't need the same amount of food. My daughter eats a lot less than my son. When you think about our kids, you know, elementary school, and they go to get lunch in the lunch line. So all they're doing is they're walking through the lunch line and they're gonna put up a one or a two, right? There's usually two options for lunch. They go through and they put on up a one and a two. Um, I don't know about your guys' schools, but our schools mix grades. So the lunch ladies don't know what grade somebody's in. Plus you could have like a six foot tall fifth grader, but you can also have a four foot five tall fifth grader. And they would never know that they're both in the same grade. You have girls, you have boys, you have, you know, a wide range of kids, right? But all you do is you just put up a one or a two. So my daughter is going to get the same amount of food as my son because how the lunch lady is going to know. They don't portion out depending on your size and your height and your age. I think it's crazy to think about portion sizes because we're all different. So eat what you want. Be mindful about it. Don't starve yourself. Don't overthink it. If you really want to like have a tip, take your hand and cup it like this. So if you're doing like a casserole or something, you know, uh, around that, whatever would like fill a heaping amount um, into your cupped hand, that's probably a good serving size. So I shared, you know, chili dog casserole. If you're like, how much should I eat? Cup your hand 
and like that heaping school spoonful that would fill your hand that's probably how much you should eat eat that add some vegetables to it drink some water with it and then if you're hungry give yourself a few minutes and then go back and help yourself with like half amount of what you just had and and eat it but like we're not about going from unhealthy habits to unhealthy habits so we're not going from overeating to starving ourselves so you want to be smart about it also eat food like as long as you're focusing on the elimination piece the other stuff will fall in, in the suit i'm telling you guys i don't know why but i could eat a whole pizza from like little caesar's i could eat a whole pizza and still be hungry but if I make it myself at home using natural ingredients, I can only have one to two pieces and I'm stuffed. You'll kind of see as you start eliminating that bread, pasta, processed foods and sugars and you start replacing it with whole foods, um, fruits, vegetables and protein, you're going to notice that you're going to get fuller faster. You're going to stay fuller longer and you're going to start seeing amazing results. That's what I have for you guys. Hopefully that's helpful. If you do need some help, don't forget you can always shoot me a message. I'm really behind on messaging. Like I said, it's been a crazy week.